scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The second level of deliverance, very quickly, is what I call deliverance through transformation. This is the level that is probably most neglected by many believers. They do not know that this is a second level of deliverance. Please write, deliverance through transformation. And that by the word of God. Deliverance through transformation. The second level of deliverance. In Mark chapter 5, the story of the madman in Gadara. Mark chapter 5, we'll read verse 15. Please let's hurry up for sake of time. Mark chapter 5 and verse 15. Remember, before now, Jesus had casted that legion of the legion of devils out of the man. And then, you know, the story got to town and people rushed and came. Here's what the Bible says happened. They came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion. What did they see him do? Sitting and clothed in his right mind. So, in as much as the demon had been casted out, you would think that's all. But the man was sitting and listening to Jesus and now his mind was becoming right. The demon can leave, but your mind can be wrong. Are we together now? The second level of deliverance seeks to bring that transformation to your mind. Write this down, please. Deliverance through transformation involves a reorientation of your spiritual understanding please write that down deliverance through transformation involves a reorientation of your spiritual understanding now that the spirit influence has been cast out in the name of jesus you need a reorientation to change your thinking and your perception because i taught you that strongholds and negative mindsets or belief systems that have been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to keep the victim perpetually in that state deliverance through transformation seeks to bring a reorientation of your spiritual understanding write this down deliverance through transformation involves opening the believer to the nature and the character of god then the principles of the kingdom deliverance through transformation involves opening the believer up to the nature and the character of god and then the principles of the kingdom that means the second level is that the believer is opened up to understand the nature and to understand the character of god and then to also understand the principles of the kingdom if you're with me say amen. amen so number one a reorientation of your spiritual understanding opening you up to the nature and the character of god and then the principles of the kingdom write this down please transformation closes the door of ignorance and empowers the believer to rise above the influence of demons i'll take it again transformation closes the door of ignorance transformation closes the door of ignorance and empowers the believer to rise above the influence of demons how true 
transformation closes the door of ignorance and empowers the believer to rise above the influence of demons. If a door is not open, demons cannot come. And ignorance is one of the doors or access points. The assignment of transformation is that when the demon goes out, then transformation now closes that door. Otherwise, the demon will say, I will return back to my house. It can find it swept. It can find it clean, but still opened. Are we learning? Finally, transformation tears down negative thought patterns. Transformation tears down negative thought patterns that hitherto had been doorways for demons. Transformation tears down negative thought patterns or mindsets you may call them. Transformation tears down negative thought patterns that hitherto had been doorways for demons. <clears throat> listen, listen carefully. Write this down and listen. Let me take you one more time. Transformation tears down negative thought patterns that hitherto had been doorways for demons. Now, please pay attention. Demons don't just find comfort arbitrarily. They depend on the wrong mental construct of the victim to keep remaining comfortable in that victim. Are we together? So what demon spirits do is that before they attack an individual, they bring together wrong information that constructs your mindset negatively. And when they find that negative construction, the demon spirits come and fortify that thought pattern so that you will not change from thinking that way. Now it becomes a free way for them because provided you have a negative thought pattern, no matter how many times they cast out demons, they will go with joy because they know the door is open. You are not afraid of leaving your house because you have the key. Is that true? Have you had times where you left the key inside or for some reason you don't have the key and the door was locked? Now you get stranded and you get afraid. Demon spirit need not be afraid if they still have a firm control of your negative thought pattern. Please, you have to learn this. Many believers rejoice in the fact that they've been free from demon spirits. But these spirits easily and almost effortlessly return to the people. Why? Because they do not contend for transformation. The moment they are delivered, they say amen or demons are casted out they say amen they are happy and then they are flattered by the instant results they begin to receive and they no longer come to church they no longer open up themselves to the ministry of the teaching priest you see one of the blessings of coming to the house of god is that you are submitting your mindset are we together now the word of God attacks your mindset directly. It begins to deconstruct the old and poor and negative thinking patterns that came from culture, poor prior mentorship. Are we together? Inaccurate understanding of scripture. Because I told you the truth without balance can still destroy. So when you submit yourself to doctrine, among the many things it achieves is it begins to give you a super your enlightenment say amen. amen I wrote down here let's look at let me let me give you two or three more scriptures Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 Proverbs 4 and 23 thank you Jesus it says keep or guard your heart with all diligence for out of it heart is interchanged for mind many times in scripture for out of it are the issues of life. You have a responsibility to keep, protect, guard your mind, guard your heart. Are we together? Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. It says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind say the renewing of your mind 
most believers hate church and they don't know it's an attack believers like thanksgiving believers like celebration believers like anniversaries believers like gathering picnics and all of these things but the moment you say come to church to learn most believers see that i'm showing you how these spirits work as soon as the word of god is coming they manifest as slumber there is no reason to be tired you didn't come from you slept all day and you are still sleeping in the house of god even when a loud song of worship is raised you still don't wake up it's an attack are we together and then you find other expressions like distraction when your word is about to come your eyes just goes to your whatever it is your your phone whatever they are sending and it may not be something that is so necessary that you have to attend to and before you know it you are distracted and your word passes off you because you were not discerning falls on bad ground good seed but bad ground and it does not produce any result listen i want you to be very intentional about your mental transformation through the word of god the true secret for sustaining your deliverance in addition to casting out the spirit influence that one can happen in a moment transformation does not happen in a moment it takes one shout of the name of jesus to dislodge spirits no matter how age long but it will take a while quite a while because you have to deconstruct your understanding across several thoughts and then begin to remold it again that one is my assignment and by the grace of god he's granted me the grace to be a wise master builder and will build with intention provided you are willing to allow your mind to be built can i tell you there are people who sit in church and they it's almost as if they have vowed not to change no matter the fire that comes from the altar you will be surprised how it will fall on a mind that has refused to change you must open up your heart to be disloyal to any thoughts that is inconsistent with the ways of god are we together renewal and transformation happens through knowledge please write that down renewal and transformation happens through knowledge renewal and transformation happens through knowledge renewal and transformation happens through knowledge write this down please all believers need the ministry of the teaching priest the teaching priest here can refer to your pastor the apostolic ministry any ministry that is committed to the sound teaching of the word May I by this church encourage those who are ministry here and co-laborers in the gospel, please let us focus on building believers rather than exciting them. It's good to excite because the gospel is called good news, but we must obtain grace to sit down and teach. Please look up. Can I tell you, the way I will preach in a conference or in a convention might be slightly different from the way I will teach you in Koinonia koinonia this is home i seek to build methodically and so i'm not in a rush are we together in a conference you are bound by time you may just have a day or two a session or two so you can squeeze in anything there but when you are teaching your people settle down where are you rushing to they are there with you don't be under unnecessary competition to bring rema teach doctrine 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 teach and repeat what you taught again and repeat it again it must not always be newness but let it be freshness don't teach once and assume the people have gotten it this is the secret that fathers like papa hagin and copeland they keep teaching and teaching to a point where the entire congregation gradually comes into that body of knowledge when you assess the average member you see that they have a thorough understanding of certain doctrines maybe not everything but in the area of grace they know it thoroughly the average believer in the nigerian church i submit to you not all the case but most of the case you call random pick an average believer and 
interview the believer along the lines of spiritual knowledge and you will live there with pain in your heart what do you know about God what do you know about Jesus he saved me what else nothing what do you know about the house of God? Nothing. What do you know about prayer? Nothing. What do you know about the Holy Spirit? Nothing. What do you know about finances? Nothing. What do you know about advancement? Nothing. What do you know about kingdom come? Nothing. What have you then been learning? Listen, I, I, when I came into the city, I was, I was surprised at the amount people pay for school fees. Now, let me ask you, dear parents, when you send your child to a school and stretch yourself from pillar to post to cough out the school fees and pay and your child returns back with a clean uniform and you ask him a question young man what class are you and he says i'm in class whatever he is and then you ask him questions that relate to that class he gets zero based on your you are not the teacher and yet what you are asking he's not getting anything you ask questions at a lower level he still does not get anything what are you going to do to the teacher there's something called PTA. Is that true? Many of you will sit down there before it starts. You will sit in front and say, listen, I, I need to, un who is teaching this child? How can I pay this much and my child is not getting anything? Math, zero, English, zero, whatever, zero. But there are schools that when you take your child in three weeks, you will see the difference. Has that happened to you? May that be your school in Jesus' name. Three weeks. Obedient, cautious, intelligent. He speaks with you like an adult. And you say, who taught you? My teacher. What is the person's name? We, 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 he, he articulates the name of the teacher. You can see students sit down with teachers and discussing with the intelligence of adults. If they tell you they've added the school fees by 200,000, it may not be the best, but you are motivated by that result. Members will not, will not indefinitely drag themselves to a place where they don't grow. They will be tired, and one day, anything will be an excuse. Rain, fuel, Nigeria, anything will be an excuse. Yes. The consolation... The consolation you have is that when you pay that price and get seated, you have done your own part. You allow the word of God to come. I vowed with God that I will never stand on this pulpit and waste your time, my dear people of God. I love Jesus and I love you too much to stand here and waste your time. Are we together? I cherish the sacrifice of your time traveling. There are people, did you know that there are people who don't live in Nigeria and travel every week? I've, I've found reasons to say, why don't you just come for miracle service? How do you leave another nation and come and sit down? And then I waste your time and share the grace. You go back with your challenges and there is nothing that is a token of the presence of God. Everybody say deliverance through transformation. Now, let me tell you this. When it has to do with deliverance through, through transformation, the man of God pioneers that process, but he's not the only one. Every parent has a responsibility to participate in this. Every young person has a... Any, once you are in any kind of position of leadership, you owe it to contribute to the transformation of those within your sphere of influence. Are we together? As wonderful as my example about the school is, you cannot leave the school to do 100% of the work for your child. You also have a role to play. Transformation is powerful. And hear me, transformation is not only a church thing. It is an everyday thing. Open yourself to truth. Technology has given us an unfair advantage we have today. Just with the flip of your phone, checking a few things, you can have videos and materials at will and just listen. We have no excuse. Make up your mind that in the name of Jesus, you will contend for transformation. Let me tell you how to contend for transformation. Go and write a list of areas where you don't know anything about. 
be very honest and sincere or that you do not know enough first corinthians 8 and verse 2 very powerful scripture let me show you something there if any man think that he knoweth anything he said he knoweth nothing as he ought to know that means you can know about faith but not enough to give you the kind of victory you want you can know about deliverance but maybe at the peripheral level there are still gaps in your understanding you have a responsibility to continually upgrade until you gain mastery in the kingdom if you're with me say amen, amen. in acts chapter 2 last scripture and then we'll jump to point number three in acts chapter 2 from verse 42 let's look at the the nature of the early church and their contention for, for they are contending for transformation the bible says and they continued say continued that's the key that's the key starting is not the key continuing is the key did you hear what i said starting is not the key continuing is the key the real power of transformation is in your consistent contact with information not just once not just once in a while and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer they continued this was what they did often always in fact continued doctrine fellowship breaking of bread prayer doctrine fellowship breaking of bread prayer and they began to evolve into wonder walking dimensions of themselves show me a believer who has vowed to open up for transformation and i show you someone who will be a wonder in no distant time are we together we are victims of the things we know inaccurately or we do not know at all. So we must trust God for grace to continue to allow the house of God to build our spiritual understanding methodically so until we become people of stature and maturity. May that be our testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, very quickly, a quick recap. Three levels of deliverance. Number one, casting out the spirit influences number two deliverance through transformation and that by the word of god are you ready for number three number three is called the discipline of conformity please write it down the discipline of conformity conformity is spelled c-o-n-f-o-r-m-i-t-y conformity another word for conformity is compliance with standards the discipline of complying with standards the discipline of adherence to scriptural instructions the discipline of having respect for the principles of god this is the last level of deliverance unfortunately most believers have not been taught that they have an active role to play in conforming to the terms that keep them in victory the discipline of conformity please underline the word discipline and underline the word conformity the discipline of conformity again what does conformity mean compliance with standards you conform to the degree to which you comply with standards adherence to scriptural instructions having respect for the principles of the kingdom is called conformity so you you need to be disciplined to adhere to the principles that guarantee your victory over demons and over whatever it is the powers of darkness now please look up to engage this discipline of conformity there are two things you need number one is called the enabling grace of god write it down you cannot conform by the strength of the flesh you need what we call the enabling grace i've taught you here that grace has dimensions is that true there is the saving grace but there is the enabling grace 
the grace that empowers you you do the doing but the strength is not from you enabling grace philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 popular scripture here's what it says i can do all things how many things all things through christ which strengthened me i can do all things it is not by my strength i will do the doing but the strengthening comes from christ so you need for you to be able to sustain the discipline to conform and adhere to the principles that keep you in victory you need the enabling grace of god number two you need your will the union between the enabling grace of god and your will is what empowers you to conform your will your will your will very important are we together philippians chapter 3 let's look at verse 12 we'll read down to 16 very quickly not as though i had already attained either were already perfect he says but i follow after if that i may apprehend that for which i am apprehended of christ jesus we're reading to 16. next verse now brethren he says i count myself to i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind that's an act of the will and reaching forth unto the things that are before next verse 14 i press say i press it's an act of the will i press towards the mark for the price of the high calling in jesus 15. he says let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded and if anything ye be otherwise minded god shall reveal even this unto you the last verse it says nevertheless whereunto we have already attained let us walk by the same rule what rule pressing let us mind the same thing say i press let me tell you this there are many be believers who do not know that they have an active role to conform to take advantage of the enabling grace in union with your will for instance the bible says blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly is it in your bible nor stand in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of the scornful when you are aware of that being aware does not immune you you must now obtain grace to create systems that will bring you in compliance to that truth is somebody learning now yes the discipline of conformity may involve you having to separate yourself from negative relationships that you have had somebody is calling you all the time oh let's go to the club let's go to this and you find out that most of what is happening there is completely antichrist it is within your power to pay that price as a token of your determination to be free from the influence of demons the discipline of conformity if the spirit of poverty has been ravaging you and the channel through which it, find, it found access to your life is financial carelessness when you now learn the, the principles of the kingdom and you learn that frugality and management is one of the ways to increase you begin to create systems are you seeing now by yourself systems that tame financial carelessness from your life the discipline of conformity no matter how many gallons of oil or communion you take and swallow even if you you take one whole jar provided you don't open up yourself to be disciplined and to confirm to conform yourself to adherence to the principles of the kingdom i guarantee you satan will return this is why you see a lot of people angry with preachers as though they are the ones who are not powerful now you go back and check nothing has changed their lifestyles have not changed their speaking has not changed that there is no discipline around their life and yet they wonder why all the prophetic words don't happen this charge i give unto you timothy that you wore a good warfare with the prophecy that has been given to you 
Say discipline. Please shout it one more time. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do. Who does the doing? All his commandments which I commanded this day, that the Lord thy God shall set thee high above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2. He says, all these blessings shall come upon you. Who is the you? Not the you that has had. The you that has disciplined yourself to walk in keeping with the terms. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Many people confess it, but it has never happened in their life. Do you know why? Because there is indiscipline. We do not conform to the terms. This book of the law, he says, shall not depart from out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do, observe to do all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Can I tell you this? I thank God for the grace of God that was given to me. But look at my notes. These are the notes, These are the notes that, that I use for preparing this sermon. You can see it was not typed, handwritten. Say discipline. Say conformity. My sitting down and burning the midnight candle is my participatory activity with the Holy Ghost to see to it that the prophecy for the deliverance and the emancipation of God's people will happen. I can fold my arm and say, God, are you not the creator of the ends of the earth? And not study. I submit to you by God. You will be shocked at how many researches, how many materials. This is not a new subject to me. But I studied afresh again for one series. Say discipline. Please shout it. Say discipline. You see, many people, many people in church are not told this aspect. And we superstitiously believe that just because the victory has been won in Christ, it will just come automatically like that. No. When you pray for safety, you drive your car to where you need to go. You don't pray for safety and say, Lord, take me there and lie down. You get up, you dress and act of your will. You drive knowing that there is grace back in you, but you still drive. Lord, as I'm traveling for these eight hours, go with me. Amen. You believe. But for eight hours, it's not the hand of the Holy Ghost that will be on that steering. It's going to be your hand. Enduring, somebody who want to hit you, you will still... And it's you that will go there. The union between your diligence, your discipline, and the grace of God is what powers results. Please, are we learning? It was God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo, who said, behind everything that works, there is somebody walking it. Any Christianity, he said, that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. I agree. I agree. The Holy Ghost can use you, can use your faculties to pray, but you must be alive and ready to engage with him. Are we learning now? So these are the three biblical levels of deliverance let's do a quick recap number one casting out the spirit influences never forget this the first level that is usually in most cases instantaneous just knowing what to do and engaging it with authority brings to end all of their onslaughts but the second step is deliverance through transformation and that will take a while. You have to sit with the word of God until it cultures your spiritual understanding again. And then number three, the grace, the union of the enabling grace together with your will to now walk in keeping with the truths there. Believe me, I tell you this by the authority of scripture. Anybody who walks by this, this tripartite approach to deliverance indeed will experience unquestionable liberty. Most believers will only choose the first because it looks like the most charismatic and the most physical of the three. And I do not downplay it. 
I've told you that when spirits leave, sometimes, most times, instantaneously, you can begin to see results. But don't be carried away by the result. Satan is a determined fellow. We learned that from part one. He left Jesus for a season. He goes back to re-strategize and returns back in hope that you will not do two and three. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Now, I have to teach you this. Please write it down. How do you conform? I've spoken about conform, uh, conforming and adhering, but I have to structure it to teach you. How do you conform? When we talk about conformity, we're talking of adherence. What are the ways I need to teach you? Primarily, there are two channels for your conforming to the word of God and the ways of God. Number one, your words your words your speakings your words you conform by the discipline of speaking right because your words carry power proverbs 18 20 21 proverbs 18 20 21 very quickly a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips he shall be filled are you seeing it now that your belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of your mouth and then with the increase of your lips you will be filled read 21 popular scripture death and life are in the power of the tongue it says they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof you are ready to conform you must begin to speak like a child of god with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession, homologio, repeats as God has said. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You must speak right. Believers speak carelessly. We don't care. We say all kinds of things. We call death to our lives. We call defeat to our lives. We call failure to our lives. And we say it does not matter. Say not before an angel, I made a mistake. Number two, the second way you conform is through your decisions. This is a very major tool for conformity. Your decisions, your choices, and your decisions. Write this down, please. I learned this years ago from Dr. Mike Murdoch. Decisions decide destiny decisions more than your conditions decide your destiny hallelujah it was jim ron of blessed memory who said no matter what changes around you if you do not change nothing will change the political party can change the economic tide can change your age can change every other thing can change but if you do not change you are the principal factor responsible for your growth if you change and everything remains the same you will still win if you remain the way you are and everything changes you will still have the same result under any condition if you are the same your result will be the same the most important component in your success is not what you do is who you become i've taught you here becoming is greater than doing you only do when you have become but the people that do know their god knowledge they shall be becoming they shall do most people focus on doing if the old mindset is what is doing something new you will still have the old result it has to take the new mindset to do something else are we together your decisions deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 15 very quickly deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 15 see i have said before you koinonia this day life and good death and evil reading to 20 16 now in that I commanded, in that I commanded thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments 
and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live do you see it there and multiply and the lord thy god shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it next verse 17 now give us 17 but if thine heart turn away so that thou will not hear but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them uh-huh i denounce to you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over jordan to go in and possess it now verse 19 i call on heaven and earth to record as witnesses this day that i have said before you koinonia life and death blessing and cursing therefore use your will choose life choose life by choosing your words choose life by making quality decisions that thou and thy seed may live are we together that thou mayest love the lord thy god that thou mayest obey his voice that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days thou mayest dwell that thou mayest dwell in the land that the lord swear unto your fathers to abraham and so on and so forth he said choose life write this down please as we wrap up this session so that we'll get quickly to the weapons of victory the quality of your choices and decisions the quality of your choices and decisions will always be a reflection of your belief systems the quality of your choices and decisions will always be a reflection of your belief systems that means the kind of information that has shaped your mindset the quality of your choices and decisions will always be a reflection of your belief systems so if your choices and your decisions are negative and demon attracting you need to review the information that shapes your understanding and your paradigm your perceptions and your beliefs then you can now make quality decisions that honor your now superior mindset most believers do not contend for transformation and so in as much as they make decisions they find out that most of their decisions are decisions that lead to defeat remember i have taught you here that you do not choose consequences you make decisions and the decisions themselves have attached to them already consequences the discipline to apply and live by the truth you found is the last step to deliverance the discipline to apply and live by the truth you have found is the last step to complete deliverance the discipline to apply and live by the truth you have found is the last step to complete deliverance john 13 7 john 13 7 jesus oh dear 17 13 17 now that ye know these things happy are you it says if you do them knowing it is not enough now that ye know these things if ye know these things king james says happy are you if you do them pray in the spirit in one minute as we go to the last subtopic this will lead us into the communion and then the prayer Shabaromska de la Cabaria da Cosia da Balash So we bow as we enter the throne room and we cast ourselves down at your feet you are holy thou art holy there is none like you in your presence that is where 
we must be in your presence that is where we must be hallelujah listen after seasons of intense demonic oppressions in my own life even though i was already in ministry i knew that i had to study these things sincerely i didn't want to stand and deceive god's people in confusion and it led me to begin to study what i'm about to teach you now i knew that nothing was wrong with the integrity of god's word and i had to admit painfully so that there was something i did not know can i tell you if it fails it is never with god if it fails it is never with god there is something you do not understand and the quicker you come to that realization the better and the easier and the safer for you for many people it's going to take them a long time to know that god is still love and that his word is still dependable in spite of the plethora of defeats we may be having in our lives let god be true and all men liars weapons of victory in this kingdom we have weapons that help us establish the victory that is in christ haven't taught you the three levels of deliverance casting out the spirit influences transformation by the word of god and then the discipline of adherence or conformity now i want to teach you the weapons that have been given to the believer to guard your victory and to establish your victory the first level of these weapons is in Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. As a subtopic, please write, the whole armor of God. The Bible shows us that the believer can be, can dress like a warrior with the whole armor of God. And that the purpose of the whole armor of God is so that you can stand against the wiles or the schemings of the devil. Are we learning? The whole armor of God. I will run through it very quickly. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the schemings of the devil. Right? It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So this is the information that supports your putting the whole armor of God. You put the whole armor of God knowing this. That we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. 13. Now, it says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, he repeats, that ye may be able to withstand. Say withstand. In the evil day, and haven't done all to stand. Now the weapons. Stand therefore. There are seven of them as revealed here. Weapon number one is called truth. Truth. I will just list them and then explain them briefly. Your loins gird about with truth. The first weapon that helps you stand against the wiles of the devil is truth. Number two, the breastplate of righteousness verse 15 number three your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace the preparation of the gospel of peace number four above all he says taking the shield not just faith the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench how many all the fiery darts of the wicked 17 and take the helmet of salvation that is number three okay number five take the helmet of salvation and then number six the sword of the spirit which is the word of god are you seeing now he's describing the things that you must dress yourself with to be immune against the wiles of the devil 
I wonder how Paul had his revelations. Did he see a vision of a man dressed like this? And watching where unto, this is the seventh now, praying always. Most times when we read it, we stop at six. No, it is seven. Prayer is the seventh. Praying always consistently with all prayer, meaning there are different kinds of prayer. He's saying when it has to do with your defense, bring all of them on board. Praying in the spirit, supplications, petitions, add all of them. And he says, watching where unto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Now, let me explain to you, King James, I submit to you that when it has to do with the whole armor of God, King James does not do the kind of justice that we need in understanding this. If you read this just in King James, you may not have the best expression. Let's go to Amplified. We'll jump very quickly and then we'll examine the whole armor of God. Same scripture amplified, please, very quickly. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse, let's start from verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies, that you may be able to successfully stand against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. 12. For we are not wrestling. Let's go to 13 for sake of time. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger and haven't done all that the crisis demands to stand firmly in your place. Are you ready? Let's see what Amplify says. Stand therefore on your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins so it starts with truth and then number two it says uh, okay well it says and haven't put on the breastplate of integrity and moral rectitude and right standing with god this is him teaching now what that righteousness means are we together next verse let's read very quickly and having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with a firm-footed stability and promptness and the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. 16. Lift up over all the covering, the shield of saving faith, upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. 17. It says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword that the spirit wields, which is the word of God. 18. It says, pray at all times on every occasion in every season in the spirit. Now, let me list for you what the full armor of God really means. I've searched this in at least 12 or 13 translations and also on a few lexicons. Number one is truth. Integrity and moral courage is what the Bible refers to as truth. Number two what he calls the breastplate of righteousness is actually an upright heart an upright heart is what he calls the breastplate of righteousness number three preparation of the gospel of peace is the third weapon do you know what this means he's saying carry with you an awareness that whilst you are ready to preach the gospel there is an immunity that follows you daniel chapter 12 and verse 3 very quickly to buttress on that point daniel 12 and verse 3 the bible says and they that be wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forevermore the star is far in the heavens it is not threatened by anything that happens on earth and he says when you are your feet is shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace derive an understanding that because your heart is stayed on the gospel there is an immunity that you enjoy are we together number four the shield of faith faith like a shield a system of defense number five he calls it the helmet of salvation do you know what this means notice that a helmet protects your head and if you go to an engineering site or you go to battle 
it seems to me like among the many things you cover they watch your head very carefully and he says what covers your head is the helmet of salvation that means there is an understanding of salvation especially your oneness with christ and your positional advantage these dual revelations that come on account of salvation must protect you the helmet of salvation you draw your strength like Ephesians 6 10 amplified says from your union with him the awareness that I am one with Christ the awareness that I've been exalted your oneness with Christ and your positional advantage as a result of salvation it can cover your head and give you victory and then the sword of the spirit which clearly is the word of God and finally consistent prayer now let me tell you this this is very powerful because when you truly engage these seven arsenals the bible calls it the whole armor of god do you know what this means this is these are the forces that work in synergy to maintain your victory now notice that the whole armor of god does not necessarily establish and manifest your victory, but it maintains it. The assignment of the whole armor is maintenance because you use it to stand. That means you stand maintaining what has been manifest. I will be teaching you the, the forces that establish and manifest. The assignment of the whole armor is that when these forces have worked for you, and the victory has now come you engage them as maintenance systems the whole armor of god i wrote here are largely preventive strategies that help the believer maintain his or her victory they are preventive strategies they help you maintain your victory in christ an upright heart the shield of faith the consciousness of your salvation the awareness of the immunity that follows you as you preach the gospel all of these things are maintenance spiritual maintenance strategies that means for one who has obtained victory in experience you engage these things to maintain your victory having an upright heart alone an upright heart you know what an upright heart is a heart without guile that alone is a powerful maintenance system because when you pile things like bitterness, envy, anger, the devil will march like a warrior and enter your life. These are maintenance systems. But let's deal with the weapons that establish and manifest the victory as we wrap up. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah, you have won it all for me. Death could not hold you down. You are the reason, King. Seated in majesty. You are the reason, King. Hallelujah. That will be your song. You have won my victory. Hallelujah. Listen, I still remember it today, even though it's many years ago, the day I found this, it was in the night, I remember, I ran, I ran to my room, God is my witness, I stood in front of my room and I said, Satan, with this that I know, I will not even drive you, you are welcome, from that day, light is powerful 
John 1 5 says the light shine it brothers and sisters I want to hand you by the spirit weapons tonight that fortify you you will stand and dare the gates of darkness with audacity that is unrepentant away with that threat that after exalting Jesus something will boomerang back no not when you have this can I tell you when people try to fight terrorists sometimes they hide and they mask themselves so that the terrorists don't see them and attack them but when soldiers and the police fight when they are parading terrorists they don't cover their face because they have the system to reproduce it again you never see them parading even if they are the capon they will tell you these are the guys terrorizing and the person saying it has children and he does not cover himself because he's surrounded by an intelligence system that immunes him you will never see the president of america wearing helmets but you try to touch him you don't see him cover himself with anything he can even be flying t-shirts and taking coffee you just try to kill him then you will know why it's called a superpower Please sit down I want you to be sensitive we're wrapping up I thank the Lord for his presence I thank the Lord ah. where would I be if you left me now where would I be if you left me, thank you for your patience where would I be Until I came to that understanding, it took a while for to be patient with me. Weapon number one, the word of God. Write it down. There are three weapons that eternally establish and manifest the victory over satan i don't care what cause i don't care what charm these are the weapons number one is the word of god hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 please let's run hebrews 1 3 who being the brightness of his glory he says the express image of his person upholding all things by the word of his power another version says he upholds all things by his powerful word that means the word of god literally upholds all things ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4 we'll run through the scriptures my apologies to be rushing so that we'll finish everything and yet do justice to all that we need to do tonight where the word of a king is except that person is not a king the word of a slave may have doubts but where the word of a king is it says there is power but the second part is what i like who may say unto him what are you doing that when a king speaks who stands to say i'm not sure who can stand against the lord no one can no one will who can stand who can stand against our king? No one can. No one can. No one will. No one will. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Where the word of a king is so every time you hear the word verify who spoke where the word of a king is there is power Isaiah 55 verse 11 please sit down 
Isaiah 55 verse 11 were examining the power of the word so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it says it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it Psalms 107 and verse 20 please write Psalms 107 verse 20 the Bible never said he gave his word he sent it when you send a messenger as a seed as a king it does not disobey he sent his word and that word will remain and keep hovering around until it heals until it delivers from destruction then it goes back like a faithful messenger I have finished he sent forth his word mark 16 20 mark 16 20 and they went forth and preached everywhere the lord walking with them and confirming the word write this the word of god activates the power of god the power of god is like is like a nuclear a nuclear missile but the word of god is that code that activates it as powerful as the power of god is it remains barren until the word of god comes listen to me very carefully in first john chapter 2 first john 2 please hurry up media first john 2 from verse 12 first john 2 and then verse 12 i write these things to you little children he said because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake 13 i write these things to you fathers because ye have known him from the beginning i write to you young men because you have overcome the wicked one i write to you little children because ye have known the father 14 he says I have written to you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning and then I have written unto you young men because you are strong and the word of God abided in you this is the source of your strength young men you are strong but your strong your strength is derived from the word of God the word of God contains the will of God do not forget the word of God contains the will of God. And then I have taught you that the word of God defines the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. That when God relates with the believer, the jurisdiction of that relationship is the word of God. One last scripture. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14. This is the confidence that I have in you whenever i call you you will answer me this is the confidence that i have in you whenever i call you you will answer me listen and this is the confidence we have in him that if we ask anything according to his word which is a capture of his will the bible says he heareth us 15 and if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask we know that we have our petitions that we desired of him that means when you approach the things of the spirit and that includes the matters of warfare and demons your confidence is based on the fact that the basis of your relating with this all-powerful God is his word. And he has bound by covenant that provided it is a provision that his word allows, he will not say no to. The word of God, weapon number two. The name of Jesus. weapon number two the name of jesus hmm. mark 16 17. and these signs 
shall follow them that believe whatever the signs are they will only happen in my name there are numerous signs but all those signs together only happen in my name the name of a man is a representation of his office it's not just a means of identification when you call people by names number one it identifies them but number two it describes the extent of their specialty when you say doctor this person why do you need to mention that because in that we already know that this man has studied and he has gone that far are we together yes when you say somebody is ambassador this his excellency honorable senator why do we add those things those are attempts to describe competence those are attempts to describe the vastness of ability in my name means as touching my office there are times that when people write certain things they are not really interested in what was written they want to see the letter headed paper what name is that letter you, somebody can write something and just give you a letter headed paper and not even write the he may not even spell correctly please attend to him signed the letter headed paper on that table becomes a guarantee for your favor because of the office that brought you can i tell you this listen carefully when jesus died and resurrected and was exalted the bible says an office was given to him we call it a name and that that office was so constructed that nothing the same way joseph was exalted and pharaoh said i am pharaoh and in nothing will he be hindered he would only be second based on the ranking of the palace but in terms of administration pharaoh said don't ask me anything that has to do with the administration of egypt come to pharaoh to joseph so jesus has been exalted in john 14 and verse 13 to 14 why am i teaching you this because that is the name that will bring you a very permanent victory tonight john 14 13 and 14 and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name take note in my name there does not just mean chanting the alphabet j-e-s-u-s -E uh -uh. with the consciousness of my office that i will do that the father may be glorified in the son verse 14 if ye shall ask anything in my name i shall do it hallelujah with the little grace and honor that god has given some of us we've had the privilege of using the honor of this office even to open doors for others there are people that have just written some things on paper please sir help this person with my signature and as limited as we are as human beings you will be amazed at the doors that that signature opens the person carrying it may not deserve it but he's not going on his own there is an office are we together if the president minutes on you and says look for a job for him with all this unemployment noise look for a job the person who looks who does not look for that job will most likely be the one to leave that job for you so the person knows there is pressure on the person executing it even if it means creating another committee to put you there so he gave us his name you know what that means he gave us his office and said function he said listen let me warn you satan will not respect you because of you make sure that every time you function walk within the consciousness of this office this office most believers call j-e-s-u-s -E and yet they are not walking in the name to walk in the name does not mean to recite it we call j-e-s-u-s -E so that the nations will know that the one we are talking about who is lord and christ is jesus the son of the living god but the name is not jesus the name is his lordship you see 
I have seen the power of names. I worship team people who sing it all the time. There are thrones, there are names, there are all kinds of things. It is true. Seated in this place, Koinonia is a collection of extremely successful people by the grace of God. And by the privilege of leadership, I know some of the people seated here and outside and around connected to this ministry. I know the kind of power that their offices provide. There are people when they like you, you will never go to the embassy again to stand for visa. Human beings. It doesn't matter whether the embassy is locked. You will still enter without entering. Names. Now listen carefully. There are people when they love you, their names become a receipt. You will pay for anything, anywhere. Credited to the name. There are times that admission will be over, but certain names will extend the date. There are hospitals when you go to, you can go in a name and you will not pay one naira. The name paid for it. Listen, when he says in my name, that means you must have the consciousness of how far and how exalted this name is. The name of a governor will not solve national issues because he's a governor. The jurisdiction, his name as governor already created the boundary of his power. Are we together? He cannot, another governor cannot go to another state and impose things. But the president as the commander in chief within that, that, that region, a monarch can stand and make decisions on behalf of his territory. There can be a land dispute and they take it to the monarch and he can look at it and say, you know what? I decide, I decide. Look at judges, magistrate judges. They literally can choose whether a human being should live or die. Can you imagine that? Somebody can come. It does not matter except God helps him by mercy. But naturally speaking, a judge can actually sit down and in five minutes reduce somebody's lifetime to one more day. Names. You can sit in a position and give a verdict and say for the rest of your life, you will spend it in prison and hit that thing and that's the end of it. Any other discussion, you discuss in prison. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.